But first, you wouldn't think people would pay good money to be scared out of their wits. The roller coaster fans will. In fact, fanatics will travel hundreds of miles to find the scariest coasters they can. We haven't ridden them all, but we do have some pretty frightening film from seven of the nation's roughest. So whether you're a doer or a watcher, hang on, because we're taking a ride on the wild side. Boy, do I really love wild rides! An 80-foot drop at a 70-degree angle. This is Coney Island Cyclone. Riding it has been said to cure hiccups, coughs, and even stuttering. But the Cyclone's steep drops and faint turns have probably caused more stutters than they've cured. In 1971, the ride was remodeled, and today is still considered one of the country's best, even though it was designed and built more than 50 years ago. Believe it or not, the Russians invented the roller coaster. In the 17th century, they constructed huge wooden slopes that let screaming patrons slide down a curving path of ice. The early coaster cars were crude sleds on ice skates. It was strictly winter fun, of course. Later, the French tried aerial walkways using bicycle wheels instead of skates. In 1870, coasters came to America. Called scenic railroads, they were slow and designed more for a view than a thrill. But American ingenuity soon intervened. In 1907, the Hyatt Roller Bearing Company invented a device to reduce friction. The first cars were called Hyatt Roller Bearing Coasters, later shortened to Roller Coasters. The Roaring Twenties saw business boom. At one point, more than 1,500 coasters were roaring and rocketing at parks throughout the land. But then the stock market came crashing down, and many roller coasters did too. Wrecking balls, bulldozers, and dynamite took their toll. When the smoke cleared, fewer than a hundred of the giant sky rides were standing. But in the 1940s and 50s, Americans went coaster crazy once again. California coaster expert, Gary Criazzi. During the 50s, everybody was sitting inside watching their TV. So they're coming outside now, and if we sit and watch Neil Armstrong on the moon, we want to go on the moon, and the only way we can do it is to ride on a roller coaster. That's the only we can way we can experience weightlessness or G-forces and all that kind of thing. One of the first to recreate that weightlessness was Disneyland with its Space Mountain, a completely indoor roller coaster. Disney's master builders were able to convince groundlings they'd gone to the moon and back. More than two million riders a year accept Disney's challenge, and so have other amusement parks. Marriott's Great America, 45 miles north of Chicago, in Gurney, has a roller coaster it calls the turn of the century. It features, for anyone who can take it, two 360-degree loops. And if that's not enough, the park is unveiling another coaster this spring. It's called the Tidal Wave, and the only thing more frightening than riding it has been building it. It gets windy, then you have to strap yourself down because they have the chance of blowing off. Do you ever get scared? Yeah, you got to be scared to go up there. If you're not, you'll fall. Fortunately, riding the wave will be a lot less risky than working on it. The Wave features a computer switching system to guard against accidents. And to make sure it will perform as planned, it's been thoroughly tested with lead weight sitting in for paying customers. The ride was tested this way for weeks before Great America employees got a chance to try it out. first 200 feet of the tidal wave, the cars accelerate to 55 miles an hour, go upside down through a 76-foot high vertical loop, and rocket up a 70-degree incline to a dead stop. And then, and then they do it all again, backwards. As breathtaking as that sounds, the tidal wave is a mere joyride compared with other new U.S. coasters. Just south of Los Angeles, a $6 million thriller called the Colossus will be ready for riders in June. It features a gut-wrenching 115-foot drop, part of it underground. When the Colossus is finished, it may become the king. Until then, this is the wildest ride in America.
This is the Cyclone, Texas style, a marvel of wood and metal located in Astro World near Houston. This Cyclone's builder studied the Cyclone at Coney Island for two years and then built a replica. Only they built it taller, steeper, and faster. The Texas Cyclone was finished in 1976 and was immediately applauded as the best in the land. Where will it all end? Ask a roller coaster engineer that and he'll tell you there's no limit. Man can go as far and as fast as his stomach will let him. Like your stomach could take a ride like that? My stomach might, but not my head. I keep thinking I'm going to go that way and everybody else is going to make a turn. Actually, Bill, there have been remarkably few accidents on those roller coasters. When they do happen, usually they're the result of someone standing up or changing seats or doing something else rather foolish. The equipment is tested and checked pretty carefully. Although one day in Georgia, we're told that a light rain did cause the brakes on the scream machine to malfunction. Nobody got hurt, but everybody got four rides before they got it stopped. <laughs> in two minutes, we'll be back with a story that has nothing to do with roller coasters. Unless your neighbor puts up one in his backyard and you want to sue to stop him. <laughs>